Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to talk about one of my very favorite applications in Linux, and that is HTOP. I want to thank Doug, one of my Easy Linux clients, for sending me an email earlier this evening, and he suggested that I do this video because I have referred to this program many, many times uh, since I started posting videos about Linux, and I've never stopped to explain exactly what it does. And I realized that after he reminded me and I went well I ought to do that so what is HTOP? HTOP is an application that runs in a terminal you can run this whether you have an actual uh, GUI environment or a desktop loaded on a Linux system or not so no matter what kind of system I'm using whether it's a something running in a virtual machine or whether it's whatever distro it is whatever desktop it is I don't care I want it I've got to have it around because it's extremely useful and you can do a lot of really groovy things with it. So first of all, let me show you what the original top command looked like and explain a little bit about what it does. So if I hit uh, quit there, we're going to look at top. This is a very old command in Linux. And the top command shows you a lot of things about what the computer is doing, how many processes are running, uh, how many users are logged in and this is very important information to somebody who would be a system administrator on a machine that was running on a mainframe or a mini computer with many different users hooked in through terminals and Linux of course is based on Unix Unix is was the de facto mainframe operating system so therefore this all carries over and we have access to these features today but a lot of the things here are very useful uh, for a desktop type situation. The only problem with top is, is that you really can't do much with it, all right? It just shows you information. So it'll give you a process ID number, it'll tell you what user owns the process, and it will give you the priority and how nice the program is and all this stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about what all this means as we roll through our introduction uh, to HTOP here as I show you the different features. So that's the top command. HTOP gives us a lot more information in a lot more quickly readable way. If we start up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen you'll see that it's showing us what the three CPU cores in this machine are doing and we have three CPUs and uh, there each one is multi-threaded and then it shows us how much memory we're actually using so at this point this machine is taking up uh, one uh, well 1,037 megabytes and the machine has uh, 7,479 megabytes so just about seven and a half gigs available to the operating system uh, 500 gigs are taken up by the video card this has internal graphics that's why it's not an even eight the swap file is right around 8 gigabytes and we're using zero swap right now. Moving over to the right, you'll see that uh, it, we have uh, 88, or 88 tasks running, or 80 tasks, 179 processes. Six of them are actually running, so there's 179 processes that are uh, there, but they may not be actually asking for processor time at this point. They might be sleeping. Okay, so and then we have the uptime, and this machine has been up for one day, five hours, and 50 seconds in three, two, one, mark. So, pretty useful information there. Once again, you see the process ID, you'll see who owns the process, and it has the priority, and how quote unquote nice the process is. Okay and we'll talk about niceness as we roll along. So what is a process? What does this mean? What's going on here? Linux is a multitasking operating system, which means that it can do more than one thing at once. And if it wasn't multitasking, we couldn't run the modern desktops and different software that we run today. And all that really means is that if you imagine the processor uh, with this little guy standing outside of it he's the process manager there it's part of the operating system and he every time that a program requests some processor time he is the one that makes sure that it gets it and and divides it up among all the other programs that are asking it at any given time 
the more processes you have running on a machine, the slower the machine's going to be. So that's why we went through all those years where CPUs kept getting faster and now we have multi-core CPUs in machines because in a multi-thread, uh, that means that the machine can be handling more than one process at a time asynchronous, asynchronously. Uh, that means, uh, so that's why a lot of software these days is written for a multi-core processor and if you have a single core machine of any kind uh, there's some modern software that runs really slow uh, because it throws a lot of processes at that processor at the same time okay I hope that was clear um, if it wasn't I apologize so what we have here is the process ID that is actually a, a number that was given to the process when the system started it or the user started it and then we have the owner of the process. Many of these, as you can see, are owned by me, some of them by root, and the priority of the process and the niceness. All right, so let's just start going through some of the controls here. First is setup. You can change some things about it. I personally don't ever bother with it because I don't need to. F3 will allow you to search for a process. So let's do a search for Geary and now it would help if I actually typed in Geary and as you can see it, it uh, pretty much jumped right to it okay the next thing that we have is a filter which is more useful than search actually because now we can look at all the Geary's all the processes that are spun up by Geary there you go and we can turn the filter off by backspacing out. The next thing that's useful to use is the tree. This will tell you uh, exactly what the, the process order is and what program is relying on what other process. So if we look at the top one here, it says GNOME Terminal. That's running Bash. That's running HTOP. That's running some other things in the background that help the terminal run. And you can, you can scan down through here and it will show you all this groovy stuff. This is really useful when you're you have an application that's misbehaving and uh, you want to find out what all the processes are that go along with it. So we can turn the tree off, go back to what we were looking at before. And then we can um, set this up to sort uh, the different processes by different kinds of information. We can have it by the process ID, we can have it by the user, we can have it by all kinds of stuff there. The command, that sort of thing. So that's very useful. All right, F7 and F8 are nice commands. Let's talk about those for a minute. What does it mean? Well, if you take your mind back to what I was talking about before about multi-user systems, Let's say that you are logged into one of those systems and you start some process running that will take a very long time to run and requires a lot of process time. Let's say for a modern example that you're rendering video or changing, converting one format to another. We all know that that takes forever. And it also takes up a lot of processor time. So if you really don't care when this finishes you can change the priority of it you can actually make it less important to the processor of the system that will free up more resources for other programs running on the machine now it might take that program a very long time to finish but it will it's called being nice to other users okay so you're making that nicer so let's uh, work on uh, doing some niceness here now, now most of the time today you would never use this but I can, st I can see like the, the video rendering thing. If you had something that you just knew was going to take hours anyway and you still wanted to use the computer for something else or you were going to have somebody log in as another user and it was going to run in the background, this would be something that you could use. So let's, let's find something to nice. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the filter on. I've got Geary Mail running in the background and I'm going to tag all of the Geary's here with the space bar and that will highlight them because we're going to change the nicest on all of the processes that Geary is currently running okay so we have them all filtered out and now what we want to do is to nice it so we need F8 
we can make it nicer as you can see that the nice number is going up and the priority is going down and there you go so we've uh, actually made this uh, half as much uh, with as less prior half as half as less priority as it had before priorities uh, can be set from minus 20 which is basically like real time and sucking up all of the uh, resources of the processor to plus 20 which means it's barely running in the background now as a standard user without root privileges we can only make our program nicer which actually increases the number okay I, it's a little weird um, zero would be the standard priority for everything we run okay and the root user can actually increase the priority so if uh, we accidentally on a multi-user system drop the priority down to 19 for that video file we were rendering then what's going to happen is is that we won't be able to speed that back up again we'd have to go get the root user to do it now on a home computer it really doesn't matter because to fire htop off as the uh, root user just put sudo in front of it or if your distribution doesn't use sudo and you have to log in as the root user just do that and then issue the command it will do the same thing but you'll have the ability to increase the priorities on different processes okay so let me uh, unfilter Gary here okay we still have Gary tagged I'm going to show you the next thing that this is useful for because uh, I, I end up using this all the time. If the Compiz controller on your desktop crashes <laughs> and stops working, uh, if you can manage to get a terminal up, then um, what you can do is uh, get HTOP running, find Compiz, kill it, it should automatically restart and then your desktop will start working again. In this case, let's kill Geary. So uh, to do that, it's F9. We already have Geary highlighted. And it should have killed it. So let's, let's, let's see if that's the case. Go back to filter. Geary, not running that's it that's pretty much what HTOP does uh, by the way Geary was running on the other desktop that's why you didn't see it anywhere so anyway that is what HTOP does and how you can use it to manage your system and try and figure out what's going on if one day you're sitting there and it's running really really slow uh, you can see whether any of these processes are actually still running uh, you can look at the CPU meter see how much memory the machine is using swap processor load all that good stuff right here and then if you find the offending process you can kill it or and then restart it or whatever you need to do to make it work so anyway gang thanks for watching the video hope it was some use to you be sure and check out freedompenguin.com for lots of articles from me and other contributors about linux also make sure you check out easy linux on the web and easy linux on facebook and if you would come by there and give it a like and also, uh, keep right here on YouTube for more videos, comments, and suggestions. Always welcome. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.